Here we're going to be looking at several examples of melanocytic lesions and we're going to start with the most common and most benign of all of these and that would be just the garden variety mole or nevus as we call them. And so when you're looking at a, a nevus uh, often at low power the skin will almost look essentially normal and so here's the epidermis and then you have the dermis and some scattered inflammatory cells which is not uncommon and as you move along the surface you can see very rare small little nests and often these nests are kind of pale uh, when compared to the uh, cells around them uh, when we look a little bit closer you will see that these little nests are actually little clusters of melanocytes and so here's one uh, and here's another one and so these are actually uh, little melanocytic nests and this would uh, appear as a mole and also along the base you'll see on occasion uh, small pigmented cells and keratinocytes with some pigment in them um, that's not uncommon as well uh, here we actually have an interesting feature so you can see just a little bit of pigment and so that's what gives it this brown color and some more uh, what we call pigment incontinence down in the dermis this is um, melanin pigment that's secreted by the melanocytes and kind of gets deposited in the dermis uh, but here what we actually have is a nest of melanocytes and this nest of melanocytes actually bridges from one uh, end of a papillary uh, structure to the other and so this is what we would call bridging and this is a sign of actually dysplasia so uh, not that this is very severe this is a case of mild dysplasia uh, but dysplasia nonetheless so this is an example of one end of the spectrum kind of the benign end uh, a mildly dysplastic nevus the next next example we have uh, is slightly less common and slightly more serious and you can see here that we don't really have the nests that we had in the last case along the base what we have are these large vacuolated cells that are kind of spreading throughout the epidermis and the other thing that you'll notice is that they're pretty common at the base in fact there are way too many of them and these are melanocytes so this is a, melan uh, a melanoma in situ uh, and you get to this diagnosis when you see a line of melanocytes along the dermoepidermal junction that have some atypia and kind of trickle up into the epidermis. That's what we would call pagetoid spread. Uh, just like in the last case, you can see the pigment here, and so that will have a, a pigmented appearance uh, on the skin of the patient. Uh, there is no component that's going down into the dermis. And so this is not what we would call a melanoma because there is no invasion. It's just strictly limited to the epidermis. This lesion has essentially no metastatic potential whatsoever. Finally, as you guys can guess, uh, we have the worst of all three, and this would be the melanoma. And we'll start off here at the edge. And this is pretty common for what we see in these lesions. Uh, but here at the edge of this, we can see that there is a very striking proliferation all along the base of these vacuolated cells that have kind of lost their attachments and are in little nests and clusters uh, and can be said, seen spreading up into the epidermis again. So here's pagetoid spread and here's the melanoma in situ. Again below that you see a little bit of pigment deposition and some lymphocytes in the, in the dermis. So this would be consistent with the melanoma in situ if it were not for the stuff that was next door to it and what I'm referring to is actually this part and so you can see at low power and we're at pretty low power right here uh, that there's a large collection of these melanocytes and they're pushing deep into the dermis and here's some way down in this corner uh, in addition they can be seen tracking along the adnexal structures within the skin some of the features of these melanocytes that lets us know that they are indeed malignant is that they are much larger than traditional melanocytes that we'd see in the surface of the skin. In addition, they have uh, irregular and pleomorphic nuclei. And one of the finer things that's harder to recognize is that they actually don't mature. And so when we talk about maturation, we're talking about the size of the nucleus and cell. And you'll see that at the top they are rather large. And as we move deeper into the dermis, they stay rather large. Uh, so they're not getting smaller or maturing as we say. 
Uh, because of this, we know that this is a good sign that we're dealing with a melanoma. Uh, the other things that we could see that uh, help with that distinction is that they have uh, very irregular borders. They, uh, these lesions are not symmetrical. Uh, and there might also be some dermal mitoses uh, seen in these melanocytes down here. Uh, so in this case, if you were to search for them, you might find one or two. Uh, often you don't find that many. So in summary, what we have is a spectrum of melanocytic lesions just ranging from a nevus all the way up to a invasive melanoma.